Namaste, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, my name is Justine. I'm subbing in today for Dharma One Beginner. So please practice according to your conditions. If you want to leave your camera off, that's fine. But if you want to open up your camera, I'd love to see you. Um, but it's your choice. So on that note, let's begin. So let's sit nice and tall. Close the eyes. Bring the attention inward. Nothing to do, nothing to seek. Everything we need is already within. Let's begin with the sound of Om three times to attract divine attention. Imagine you are becoming one with all beings. your mind on God alone. Rest your thoughts in God alone. God you will live hereafter. Of this there is no doubt. May all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice through our senses. May we acquire a strong desire for liberation from pain and suffering. And may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. Only peace, love, joy and compassion. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So let's begin, let's come to standing. So we're gonna start off with a visualization technique, charging breathing, standing with your feet about 10 inches apart, bring your arms above the head. From the soles of feet, begin to draw the earth's energy right up through the body to the fingertips. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Hold the attention at the breath at the fingertips. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale all the way back down to the soles of the feet. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, inhale, breathe the earth's energy right up through the body, through the fingertips. Feel it rising up, imagine it drawing right up through the body, charging it up. Then holding it all at the fingertips, hold the breath. Six, exhale again to send the breath back down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last time, inhale. Feel the earth's energy rising right up through the body. Feels like being flooded by that earth charging energy. Six, seven, eight. Hold it all at the fingertips. Hold the breath. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale all the way back down. Six, seven, eight. Feel fully charged and benefit from that energy all throughout the practice. I'll bring the arms down. So now we're going to come to the front of the mat. A couple rounds of Surya Namaskar. Bring your hands to the heart center. Close the eyes. And just let's come into the intention of offering up the practice, offering up all the fruits, imagining this as your divine duty to all beings everywhere. So imagine now you're the witness and just watch the body move by itself gracefully. Raise your arms up over the head, reach up and back, hips forward, and then come down into forward fold. Bend your knees if you need to to bring your hands flat on the ground, head close to the ground. Right foot steps back into the lunge, lower the knee down, sink down to the seats. Look up, and push the shoulders back. Come into high plank position, lower down the knees, chest and forehead to the ground. Now glide through between the arms. Pull the shoulders back, point the toes, 
coming up into cobra. Roll the shoulders back, the head comes back. Then bend the toes under, back into downward facing dog. Bring the seat all the way back, stretch the line of the back, the head comes down below the arms. Now look between the hands, bring your right foot forward to the hands. If that's difficult, you can lower the back knee down. If the foot doesn't make it all the way, you just step the foot forward, uh, slide it forward between the hands. Just drop down to the seat, gazing up again, and bring the feet back together, chest on the thighs, head down. Inhale, rise all the way up to standing. Reach up, stretch the front of the body, and then bring the hands back to the heart. Again, sweep the arms up over the head. Reach up and back, and then fold at the hips, come down, fold the body in half. Chest on the thighs, again, the head comes towards the ground. This time, the left foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Shoulders back again, come into high plank. All the movements reflecting the motion, knees, chest, and forehead down. Glide forward into the cobra. Shoulders back again, arch the back. Roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog. Lift the seat up and back, and melt the heart between the shoulder blades. Look between the hands, bring the left foot forward, sink down to the seat, gazing up as though an offering. And bring the feet back together, eyes downcast, as though making a gesture of humility. Come right up to standing, reach up and back, and come back home, hands to the heart. Let's do another round, reach the arms up and then go down into a forward fold. Bend your knees again if you need to, chest on the thighs. Right foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Lift the chest, and then into high plank position. Lower down the knees, chest, and forehead. Glide through into the cobra. Roll the shoulders back. Stay here for a moment. Telescope the neck out of the shoulders, push into your hands, and see if you can lift your chest up a little bit more. Imagine trying to get your head to come right over your seat. Feet together like the tail of a snake. Feet to a tail of a snake doesn't have any feet, it has a tail. Now roll over your toes back into downward facing dog. Here, just let's play around here a little bit. Just try to bend the back a little bit more, soften the line in the back. See if you can get your chest to come down closer to the ground. Always again, move according to your condition. Move in a way that feels good to you because how you feel is affecting all beings to an extent. So make the practice as beneficial and feeling good. What feels good to you feels good to others. Look to the hands again. Bring your right foot forward, sink down to the seat. And bring the feet back together, chest on the thighs, head down, bow to the legs. Come right up to standing. Reach up and back, hands back to the heart. All the movements reflecting surrender and devotion. Reach the arms up and then fold the body down gracefully. Float down. Left foot back, sink down to the seat. Come into high plank. Lower down the knees, chest and forehead to the ground and glide forward to the cobra. Roll the shoulders back, toes up the neck out of the shoulders. So just stay here for a moment, pause. If it's too much, you can always come down into the form. So again, do whatever is good for you. So from here, we're just trying to imagine you're in the form of a snake, copy the snake on all levels, mentally and physically, be regal and wise like the serpent. Physically, imagine having that boundless range of motion. You can bring your hands closer as you feel comfortable, come up a little bit higher. And then tuck your chin in, roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog. Again, here you can pulse a little bit, try to get the heart to come down towards the ground. Soften the line of the back. Imagine your dog stretching out his back. And then just exhibit the loyalty of the dog to its master. Look to the hands, bring the left foot forward, sink down to the seat, gazing up. And then the feet come together, pull the body towards the legs. Uttanasana. Come right up to standing, reach up and back, hips forward, stretch the front of the body. Bring the hands back to the heart. Take pause here for a moment. From the heart, inhale up to the space between the eyebrows. Exhale back down to the heart. Let go of all expectations and all attachments to the practice, all attachments to the results. Simply do the practice because it must be done. Shiva Namaskara. May the Lord Shiva guide us and protect us through the practice. Let's 
bestow upon us the fruit of knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering. So let's move together as one like a school of fish. Raise your arms up over the head, stretch up and back, hips forward. And then come down again. Bend your knees if you come down if you need to. Bring your chest on your thighs. And depending on your flexibility, you can see if you can push your body into your legs, try to get your legs further back, your seat up. Be very flexible, maybe your seat comes right over the heels and your forehead comes to the shins. Now from here, bring the right foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Stay up here for a moment, push shoulders back, come onto your fingertips if you need to, arch your back. So imagine you're pulling your body by the hips, shoulders back and neck long. Now come into high plank position. Lower down the knees, chest and forehead to the ground. Following through with your cobra again. Roll the shoulders back. Imagine your shape shifter shifting through all the forms effortlessly. One form melting into the other. Good. Roll over your toes back into down facing dog. Again, we're just trying to embody all the qualities of what we're representing. And then look forward, bring the left foot forward to the hands. Back foot flat, sink down to the seat if you can. Come up, Virabhadrasana one. Raise your arms up over the head. If you're having trouble having your hips square fully, you can turn the left heel up and just um, lift the heel. This might make it easier for you to have your hips square. And then look up, try to form a straight line from the base spine right to the fingertips. Be strong and mighty like the warrior. And now flat the back foot, go into warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Sink down to the shoulders. Stretch up the arms, the toes come roughly over the feet. If you're more flexible, try to sink your seat down a little bit more. Just try to be, again, strong and courageous like the warrior. Next, bring the forearm down onto your left thigh and reach the right arm over the head. Make sure your hip is not uh, jutting up. Try to sink it down. Try to have a straight line from the foot to the head and pull the right shoulder back. Look up to the hand above you. If you're more flexible, if you're more advanced practitioner, you can see if you bring your hand down to the ground on the fingertips. So do again according to your ability. So nice strong stance here again. One more elongation through the inhale. Exhale so you can turn a little bit more. If you curl the left side of the seat to under, you might be able to turn your chest up a little bit more. And then from here, look forward, look forward, and then bring the back knee down. Bend the toes under and slide your left foot in. So your legs are like a box. Left hand to the seat, right arm up. Take your hand to the outside of the knee. Inhale, lift up through the heart. Exhale, turn towards your left. Look over your back shoulder. With each inhale, pull your body further up, up uh, the hips. Exhale, turn a little bit more. So you try to not only the eyes turn, the whole torso turns, so eventually the chin comes over the back of the shoulder. Good. Now from here, look forward, bring the hands down, step back into plank. Ashtanga Namaskar, knees, chest, forehead down. And glide right through into the cobra, gracefully. Imagine this is divine dance devotion. Allow the head to go back. Every pose reflecting surrender and surrendering to divine grace. Roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog. Lift the seat up and back, melt the heart again. Then look to the hands and bring the right foot to the hands. Back foot flat. Virabhadrasana one again. Bring the arms up over the head. Just try to demonstrate the courage and the power and the determination of the warrior. Again, if you need to, you can lift the back heel so you can square off your hips a little bit better. Draw the body right up out of the hips. Good, you bring the head back, look up, expressing devotion to all the people that you protect. And now we're gonna to turn to your left, bring the back heel down, a um, foot's about 45 degree angle and come into warrior two. Sink the shoulders down. Reach out, look over the front hand. So make sure your knee's not popping in. Just try to have it so it's over the, the heel. Just 
strong and steady. Put yourself in the mindset, in the consciousness of the warrior, not only the body. Just try to imitate them on every form. Think of imitation as the highest form of reverence. And now from here, Paschvakanasana. You can bring the right forearm on the knee and the left arm over the head. Pull the arm way above the head. Exhale, sink the shoulder back so you don't lose your neck. And turn towards the ceiling. Make sure again that your hips not, jumping, your hips not jutting up. Just try to press it down and form a nice straight line of energy from the foot all the way to the hand above you. Again, if you're more flexible, if you're more advanced, you can bring your hand down to the ground, stay on your fingertips or on flat on your hand if you like. Lose yourself in the sensations. Become the warrior. And then from here, circle the hand down, look forward, right hand comes to the outside of the foot, back knee down. Bend the toes under and slide the right foot back, coming back upright. So your legs again like a box, the toes are bent under to give yourself uh, more ability to balance. Left arm up here, and then take your hands to the outside of the knee, other hand comes to the seat, use the hand to push the seat in and down. Inhale, lift through the chest, exhale, turn to look over your right shoulder. Stay upright. Each inhale, keep going taller and taller. Each exhale, turn a little bit more. Shoulders nice and open, your chest open. And then come back to face forward. Bring the hands back down, step back to the high plank. Knees, chest, forehead down. And glide through smoothly into cobra. Just keep watching the body moving. Bury your mind deep in the heart. Watch the body moving all by itself. Tell us to get the neck out of the shoulders. If you're more advanced, again, you can play as this pose. You can maybe lift your hips up off the ground and the knees come into upward facing dog. And see if you can point your nose up like a dog howling at the moon. All of these are options. Go to where you find the ability to challenge yourself, but still find stillness. We'll roll your toes back and down, into downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in here, exhale. Soften the heart in every sense, emotionally and physically. You can see if you can try to tap your head to the ground if you're more flexible. Just see if you can get your seat to come, your chest to come down towards the ground, your belly to come towards your thighs. And then look to the hands, bring the right foot forward. So just a trick about that, just try to bring your shoulders forward so that when you put your foot down, it doesn't land the big heavy thud. Lower the back knee, sink down to the seat, come onto your fingertips if you like, inhale, lift the chest, and keep sinking down to the seat, curl the tail under. Allow the head to go up and back a little bit. And then from here, bring the back foot in to meet the front foot. Chest on the thighs, head down. See if you can get your chest and your belly to stay in your thighs. Again, depending on your flexibility, you might be able to use your body to push into your legs and get your legs straight or your seat's eventually coming over the heels. Do what's appropriate for you. Don't go to the place of pain or anxiety or distress. This is not what you want to transmit. Getting ready to come up now. Reach the arms up over the head. Press the hips forward. Arch back as you feel comfortable. And then come back up. Bring the hands back to the heart. Again, take a deep breath in here from the heart up to the space between the eyebrows. Imagine God sitting in the seat of the mind, right in the center of the foreground to guide you. Exhale back down to the heart. Continue to be guided by the guru, the inner guru that's always loving you from within, always there in your heart. And release. Okay, so now we're going to do a few um, standing poses, standing with your feet together if you can, or separating them a little bit if you need to. Bring your arms up over the head. Interlace the fingers and just open up, open up the palms towards the sky. Inhale, reach up, exhale, bend to your left. Push your hips out to the right, 
as you do this, try not to bend, try not to make folds in the waist. Stay long through the side body. And feel a nice stretch and elongation through the right side. And then coming back up, rise up tall, pull the body further by the hips, go to the other side now. Push the heels, your palms, a nice smooth curve along the left side of the body, again without making wrinkles, too many wrinkles in the, in the right side. Charge the legs. And then coming back up, release the arms. This is the next pose here, starting off with preparation for dancer pose. So you're standing on your left foot first. I find it easier to take the right knee up first in front so you can take hold of the foot more easily. And then pull on the foot. And then try to get your knees, your thighs come in line with one another, pressing the thighs against one another and pushing the heel towards the seat. If you can, you can even press the heel against the seat. And raise the left arm up. Push the right shoulder back. As you inhale, grow taller and taller. And if you can, you can look up if you find the balance. Be tall and steady. Reach up, keep reaching up through the fingertips. Grow taller and taller. And then from here, release gracefully. So try to make the exit, the entrance, the hold and the exit all smooth as possible. If it doesn't play out the way you imagine it, don't worry about it. Remain unjudging, remain unperturbed like the witness. Now starting on the other side, so press down to the right foot and take your left foot knee up, take hold of the ankle and then pull it back. Try to, try to get your thighs to meet and if you can, you can push the heel against the seat, point the right left elbow back and raise the right arm up. Lift the chest, look up, pick a point, either in front or up on the ceiling. Try to pick something that doesn't move, so that a, a point that doesn't move to help you with the balance. Reach up tall. Good, one more stretch. If you fall out of it, just come right back up. Never stop trying, it's the effort that's most important, not the results. And then from here, release the foot, come back down. Good, now we're gonna come into inversions, inver inversions. So we're just gonna come into Thunderbolt for a moment to just prepare, because your hands are released to tummy heels. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, relax. Let go of all tension off the teeth. Now from here, hair pose. So we're going to place the forehead on the ground. In front of the knees, take your hands beside your feet. You can hold on to the ankles if you like, or just above the ankles. And then from here, you just roll your seat up until your knees are over your, your hips are over your knees roughly. And you come right on top of the head. You might find that you are more in the back of the head. If it's too much pressure for the back neck, if it's, if it's is very uncomfortable, then you can just move your head forward a little bit so that uh, you take the pressure off the neck. Okay, if you're more flexible, if you're more, it will do so, bring your forehead closer. And as you lift your seat, you come more in the back of the head, just stretch the back of the neck. Take your attention to the space between your eyebrows. Everything stops. Imagine all the activity of the mind, all the movements of the body and even the emotions. Still. See if you imagine you're pressing your belly button right through your lower back, your chest through the shoulder blades, between the shoulder blades. And then lower down. Relax in child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Relax and melt. Then roll your way up. So now we're going to come with our legs in front. So 
scooch forward to the front end of the mat. So we're going to do Shavangasana, Adha Shavangasana now. So what we do, the easiest way to enter is to roll onto your back, press into the arms and send the feet to over your head. And move your hands closer together. Maybe you join them together if you can. Bring your hands onto the back, on the mid back. And from here, if you feel comfortable, you can raise your legs up part way. So your body's gonna be in the angle, your hips and your toes forming a diagonal line. The feet are a little bit beyond the head. Of course, if you're more advanced and you know how to do the full Shavangasana with your legs up, you can do that. If, however, you need to modify, you can bring your, keep your knees close to your, sh your shoulders. So again, go to the position that allows you to find yourself in this state of steadiness. Where you're still challenging yourself, but your mind can still come into quietness. Concentration and steadiness takes as much the mental, it's as much of a mental challenge as it is a physical challenge. See if you can keep your attention fixed on the space between the eyebrows. You can even picture an ohm symbol there or a flower or whatever you like, a diamond. Picture in great detail. Try not to move your attention from that. If it does, again, have no judgment, just bring your mind, your mind back to that focus point. Then, start to make your way into plow pose. Bring your feet down behind your head. If your feet don't touch down, you can see if you can press gently into the back, close to the hips, and maybe the feet will come down, but don't force. And if you have any neck issues or shoulder issues, of course, be mindful. If you can get your feet down onto the ground behind your head, you can always take your hands to the ground on the ground with the palms down. If your feet don't touch down, it might be easier to keep your hands on your back. Modify as you need to, to make the body be able to stay there longer. Now we're going to lower down slowly. So try not to come down fast and hard, control it. Bring your hands behind your back, press down into the arms, keep your legs close to the body as you roll down. So your seat comes down and then just continue to bring your legs down until they're on the ground. Take a moment here to rest for a moment. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, imagine you're fainting. Let go of all fatigue, all struggle. Now fish pose. So lift one side of the seat, let's say the right side, and place your right hand underneath the right side of the seat, palm down, and then tip to your right, bring your left hip, a seat, side seat up, and bring your palm down underneath the seat. Now from here, you try to tuck your shoulders in a little bit more, try to move your elbows closer. Your thumb tips and your index fingers touching. Your legs stay straight in front. Inhale, lift up the body, the upper body. Now push your chest further up if you can. You can see if you can walk your elbows in a little bit more. And then see if you can tilt your head back and try to get the forehead, the top of the head down to the ground. If it doesn't touch down, if you need a block, it's too uncomfortable to keep your head hanging, you can place a block underneath your head. Or just stretch out a little bit more so that you can get the top of the back of the head on the ground. So now just stay here. Push your chest up, imagine you're beaming love out of your heart in all directions to try to get your heart as high as possible. Keep your legs charged, engage your legs. If you feel comfortable to do so, uh, people who are more comfortable, you can breathe very fast and those like a sniffing dog breath, streak of breath, generate some heat. and then release. Push into your forearms and then lower back down. Take your arms out from underneath you. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, relax. Just drop all 
the fatigue out of the body through which it's draining out, funneling out of your body. All the tension, all the efforts. Now, from here, slide your feet in towards the seat. So if you bring your fingers alongside the body, your, in the, your very tips of your middle fingers might be touching your heels. Can't get them to that close? Don't worry about it yet. Do what you can. Ha try to have your feet a little bit apart, but hip width apart, so the edges of the feet line up with your hips. And then lift your hips up off the ground. See if you can tuck your shoulders under, so the shoulder blades come towards one another. And from here, you can just push your, see if you can try to push your chest up towards your chin. If you want, if you need to, you can always bring your hands onto your seat to support you. If you do this, you try to get your elbows a little bit closer and you just tilt your tip, your hips forward so that you imagine you have a tail and you can touch the back of your knees with your tail. Taking all the wrinkles out of the lower back. If you're stronger, you can just interlace your fingers and just press the edges of your hands down onto the ground underneath your seat. Now, option here, Alda Urdhva Dhanurasana. So half upward facing bow. If you can, release your hands, bring your fingertips on either side of the head, spread your fingers equally distance apart, and place your fingers so they're facing away from you. Now take a half breath in, push into your fingertips, and slide your head back behind your hands. And then flip your hands around so that your fingers are facing towards the feet. Turn your heel, uh, the, palm, the fingers out a little bit more. And see if you can push, um, just stay like this here. Now those of you again who are advanced practitioners, if you want to go into Urdhva Dhanirasana, go ahead, otherwise you stay with me. Just building up the strength this way. If you push more into your hands, you won't feel as much pressure on the top of the head. Good, push into your feet. You can lift your seat up a little bit more. And then from here, tuck your, slide your head back and come back down. Relax. Just bring your legs out here, stretch the legs out and stretch your arms over the head. Reach out long here. And then slowly bring your legs in so that your knees come to your shoulders, come into a tuck. Press your thighs down into your abdomen. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, push again your thighs into your belly. Let go of all fatigue. This also helps to uh, remove any buildup of gas here. If you want to bring your chin to your knees, you can. And release. Okay, so back a little bit more. So you're on the mat. So now your left leg stays down. If you need to, if you have very tight hamstrings, you can start with your left foot coming in a little bit so your knees bent and bring the right leg up. And then hold the ankle and see if you can pull your leg towards the head. Now try not to allow the right side of the hip to ride up. You can use your thumb into the right hip crease and roll the right thigh down. So the right side of the body, the right hip drops. Now if you can, you can see if you can extend your left leg again. If it's too much, you just keep bringing it bent. It's okay. Then take your attention to where you want to find a release if you're very tight in the hamstrings. Direct your attention there. That's where the vital force, that's where the prana will go. Then from here, you can take your left arm out to the side, move your hands to the inside of the leg. Maybe if you, if you can, you can take all the inside of the heel or along the inside of the shin or the calf or even the thigh and see if you can bring your leg out to the side. So as you do this, make sure that your whole left side doesn't dislodge from the ground. So if your foot doesn't come all the way to the ground, don't worry about it again. Just move the foot until you find a nice stretch. Keep pushing out through the left heel at the same time. And then bit by bit, see if the foot will come closer to the ground. So eventually your toes might come on the same line as your fingers if you're looking from above and down onto the body. One 
one more inhale, stretch out through the left heel, pull the right foot up further, exhale, see if you can get the right foot down again without dislodging the left side of the seat. And then bring the leg back up and float it back down gracefully. And then the other leg now. Bring the left leg up, hold the ankle, again, you can slide the right foot in if you need to. If you find that you don't need to, then just keep your leg straight, the right leg. And once you have the foot, start to pull on the foot, try to get it closer to the head, keep your leg straight. You can use your left thumb again to roll the left hip down, the left thigh down so the left hip side of it drops. Then you can maybe extend the right leg again. Continue to try to pull the foot towards you again. Be mindful in this stretch. Don't go into a place of pain. Feel as though the sit bones are moving towards the front end of the mat. And then from here, take your hand to inside, either the heel or the shin somewhere, maybe even on the thigh, depending on your flexibility. And then slowly start to pull the foot towards the left, towards the ground. And if your right side starts to come up, just try to come back. Anchor down, you can even bring a right hand onto your right, the front of the right hip, right the top of the thigh, so you don't um, roll. Bit by bit, breath by breath. And if you take your right hand out to the side and press the hand down, you might be able to find more ability to anchor your right side down. Just imagine yourself in the posture trying to attain. Just keep trying to see yourself in the posture. And then eventually with constant practice, and fierce determination, maybe the body will obey, but have no attachments to the results. Just do your best. And then bring the leg back up and float it back down. And now from here, we're just going to turn on to our left side. Place your head in your hand, your left hand, place your right hand in front of your chest. Extend your legs all the way straight out. And now on the count of six, we're going to bring the right leg up. One, two, three, four, five, six, and down. Two, three, four, flex the foot. Five, six, one more time. Inhale, push the foot out, lengthen the leg as you come up. Two, three, four, five, Six, try not to make any too many folds in the right side of the body and down. Two, three, four, five, six. And now press into your hand, press into your left hip and your left elbow and raise both legs up at the same time. One, two, three, four. Keep pushing into your hip. Five, six, and down. Two, three, four, five, six. Once again, push into your hands, into your left hip, up, two, three, four. Imagine you get your feet as high as you were when you did one leg. Six, and down, two, three, four, five, six. Good, and then just roll onto your back. Take one breath in, fill yourself up with light and with energy. Imagine it coming extremely into the pores. Exhale, send it all throughout your body. Feel recharged and rejuvenated. Then you're going to roll on to the other side. So I'm just going to switch sides so I'm not facing away from the camera. So now you're on your right side and your right hand supporting your head, left hand in front. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Two, three, four, five, six. Try to get as high as you can. And down. Two, three. Make the foot look like a knife. Nice, sharp edge. And again, inhale. Two, three, four, five, six. And down. 
two, three, four, five, six. Now both feet together. Press the edge, inner edge of the feet together. Two, three, four. Keep pushing into your hip. Five. Stay with it. Six. And down. Two, three, four, five, six. And again. Inhale. Two, three. As legs come high, you have to push more into the hip, into the hand and the elbow. Four, five, six. And down. Two, three, four, five, six. And from here, again, roll onto your back. Inhale through all the pores of skin. Light and energy streaming into the body. Exhale again, send it everywhere throughout. Recharge. It's as important to offer up those moments of rest as it is to offer up the postures. So the, the, pra the practice is an ideal balance between strength and effort and drive, but with softness and surrender. Now from here, roll up to seated position any way you like, you can bring your knees in, and then rock up to seated, or however way you like. Okay, so now forward fold, Paschimottanasana. If you're very tight in the hamstrings, you can just keep your knees bent. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, drape your body over your legs. And then you can either hold your opposite elbows here, or if you can, you slide your hands down to the edge of the feet. If you have the flexibility and you can bring your feet all the way down and flat, then go ahead, don't waste your time. Inhale, keep trying to telescope your chest forward as we try to get the chest beyond the knees. Exhale, melt your body onto your legs and feel the weight of the body, just bring more release to the hamstrings. Take your attention to the base of the spine. And feel, imagine, through your attention to the base of the spine, imagine you're attracting all the blood in that area. You might even be able to feel a pulsation as the blood rushes around in that area and stimulates it. Use your imagination to visualize Amazing things happening in your body. Keep reaching forward. Stay a little, every time you practice, try to stay a little bit longer to build up your fortitude. Or if you stay in the same place, you never hold the poses in 20 years, as Dharma says, you'll still be in the same place, not having had progress. So keep trying to make progress gradually, mindfully. One more breath, you can push, get a little bit more length, push the chest, push a little chest a little bit further forward, exhale, pour more weight into your legs, your whole body, sink, feel your, your back to your legs sinking down. Then inhale, come back up. Slide your hands back behind you, fingers facing away, and bring your feet closer to the seat. Bench pose. So if you have no palms with your wrists, just push your hips up, try to get your hips as high as the knees and your chest higher than the shoulders, allow your head to drop back. If it's too much, you can keep your seat down. You just keep your chest open to pull the shoulders back and drop your head back. Now from here, again, breathe very fast and those are kissing the feet off. seat down, boat pose. Slip your hands in behind the knees, tip back so your feet come up and see so you can raise your feet up so the heels are the same height as the knees. Again, if you're more advanced, you can always straighten your legs if you like. Okay, so I'll just do this version, however, and bring your arms alongside the legs, lift your chest, and again, breathe very fast. Try not to round your back. Place your feet down, about hip width apart, not too close. Hands again behind your back and then lift your hips up again. Try not to sag, it'll just make it feel heavy for yourself. Push your hips up, chest high, higher than the shoulders. If you feel comfortable, allow your head to drop back again. Breathe very fast. Sit 
up. Now from here, stretch your left leg out and bend the right foot, right leg. So the foot comes right against the, the inseam of the leg. So try to pull your left side of the seat back so that your chest is fully over the front leg, centered over the leg. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, reach forward. Take hold of the foot. If you need to, again, you can bend your knee a little bit so your belly can rest on your thigh. Inhale, extend the head forward. Exhale, fold down. Lengthening through the spine. Again, this tension at the base of the spine. Push out to the base of the big toe. One more breath, pull the left side seat back, reach the chest further forward, exhale, melt your body, weight to the body on your leg. Lift up and go to the other side. Bring the heel in towards the root of the body, the foot flat against the inseam of the leg. Bring the arms up, reach up, and again, fold forward, hinge at the hips, bring your hand to the foot. Again, you can bring the knee up a little bit to um, release the hamstring a little bit. If your hamstrings are very tight, inhale, reset the shoulders, exhale, allow your body to just sink onto your leg, imagine your chest going beyond your knee. Your head down, your it reflecting surrender. Remain humble, remain completely unattached to the results, have no expectations. Just do your best. Make it an offering, every posture an offering. And then come back up. Now we're going to bring the feet together. So I'll turn sideways here, just so you can see. So the feet are quite far away from the roots, at least about a foot and a half or so. And then from here, you reach forward, interlace your fingers underneath your toes and bring your index fingers together if you like with the point. From here, Tarasana, it looks like a star from above. So then you come down and so you might be able to even place your head, your forehead on your toes and your chin on your heels. Try to have your elbows lined up with one another and your knees lined up. So it looks like a six pointed star. If you can't get your head down all the way, don't worry about it again. So just concentrate on lengthening. If you have a block, you might even be able to put a block between your feet and rest your forehead on the block. Again, do what feels good. Allow your knees to fall away from one another. Just radiate your light. It's like a star, bright and beautiful and brilliant. One more breath, length. You can go a bit further forward if you can. And then. the ankles, make your way onto your belly. So just staying with your feet together, again, coming to the cobra. Shoulders roll, um, hands, heels, your palms in line with your, your, um, your chest, your hearts. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale, press into your hands and lift up into your cobra. Push your chest forward. Imagine your Mussolini, this is what Dharma says sometimes. Really just try to puff up your chest. Push it out, push your shoulders back, bring your head back. Imagine trying to get your head over your seat. Make sure you don't jam up the back of the neck. You shouldn't lose your neck. Push into your hands and telescope your neck out of the shoulders. And exhale, come down. Ashvasana, so just allow your left arm to drop down by the side. Bring your right knee up and the right arm up. So your arm looks like a pitchfork. You can look towards your left, your right hand. So your thigh and your upper arm are parallel to one another. Looks like recovery pose. And then come back. One more cobra. Point the toes, bring the feet together like the tail of a snake. Roll the shoulders back and start to come up. 
where you're trying to push your heart forward away from the seat so you don't crunch up the lower back. So imagine you can see right through your spine. You want to create a nice curve in your spine without any kinks anywhere at either end, at either the lower back or the back of the neck. And then come down gracefully. And to imagine being the body of a snake. Pasha Savasana, Savasana again. Bring your right left arm out. The elbow the height to the shoulder. And then bring your left knee up. Bend your leg. So your arm and your leg are uh, 90 degrees. Your left arm, your left leg. Right arm just alongside the body. Look towards your left. Take a deep breath in. Now come forward again. One more back bend. Bring heels up toward the seat. If you can, take hold of the ankles. Bend your toes back. Flex your feet. Inhale, lift the chest. And pull with your hands. Try to get your feet away from your, uh, the head. You can see if your thighs on the ground. If you have more strength, you can see if you can start to kick into your feet. And pull with your hands, try to get your thighs up off the ground. Pull the shoulders back. If it's too much on your front, you can roll onto your right side. Do so. That's also an option. Stay there a little bit longer if you can. Now, if you're on one side, on your side, you can roll onto the other side. Otherwise, stay here. Keep pressing up through the feet. If you want, you can rock a little bit, massage your belly. Now pull heels in, and then bring your legs back down. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, press up into table, and bring the seat all the way back behind you, forehead to the ground, child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out, remove all fatigue. And roll your way up. Bring your legs out in front. Cross your right leg over to your, um, um, over to the other side of the left leg. It flips somewhere between your knee and your ankle. The right hand right behind the back. Left arm up. And then bring your forearm against the outside of the right thigh. Push the elbow against the, against the knee and vice versa. Inhale, push the lower back up and in and turn to the right. Just try to turn the torso so the chest is facing the long edge of the mat. And just try to imagine, and again, you can see right through your skin that the spine spiraling around itself and upwards. Extending the neck out of the shoulders, keep raising up, rising up through the chest. And come back, other side. The right leg extends, and then the left leg, uh, left foot on the other side of the right leg. Push the hand right against the seat. Make sure you're not leaning back. Keep your back straight and tall. The right arm up, and bring the forearm against the outside of the left thigh. Inhale, push the lower back up and in, and turn to your left. Keep pressing the elbow into the knee, the knee into the elbow. Make your way into seated position. So now, do a little bit of pranayama, just a taste, and you can maybe do it at home. But consider adding it to your daily routine. Your left hand in yana mudra, second finger and thumb connected, other three, fing other three fingers extended on the left knee. The right hand, second and third fingers fold down, and then turn the palm towards you. This is a mudra that you use for pranayama. The right thumb for the right nostril, the right ring finger for the left nostril. Always use your right hand. Okay, so we're going to do alternate nostril breathing, breathing in through the left, then for six, holding for four, exhale out for six, and back up, inhale. Through the right side, close both sides of nose for four counts, and exhale for six, so six, four, six. Okay, so now, sit tall and straight. 
Exhale, empty the lungs. And bring the right thumb to the right ring, uh, right side of the nose. Inhale, plug off the nostril. Inhale, left. Three, four, five, six. Close both sides of the nose. Hold the breath. Two, three, four. Exhale, out to the right side. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale through the right. Three, four. Fill up as much as you can for six counts. Six, then hold the breath for four. Hold the attention of the space in your eyebrows. Three, four. Exhale out through the left side. Two, even uh, exhale. Four, five, six. Inhale through the left. Three, fill up evenly. Raise the chest. Five, six. Hold the breath for four. Keep the attention always at the space in the eyebrows. Everything stops. Exhale out to the right side, slowly. Three, completely empty by the six count. Five, six. Inhale up through the right. Four, five, six. Close both sides of the nose. Two, hold the breath. Four, exhale out through the left side. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale through the left. Close both sides of the nose. Exhale out through the right. Inhale right. Pause, both sides of the nose closed. Exhale out through the left. Last time, inhale through the left. Close both sides of the nose, hold the breath. Exhale out through the right. Inhale through the right. Everything stops, hold the breath. Exhale through the left. Four, five, six. Now release and make your way onto your back for a little bit of relaxation. Shavasana pose. So be like a corpse. Once you're down on the ground, settle yourself down into stillness. Feel as though you became very heavy. All the muscles released. Feel as though the muscles are just hanging off the bones. The skin just hanging off the bones. Everything so, so heavy. Sinking into the ground. Surrender all effort and all tension. And through this physical surrender, perhaps the mind will come into a state also of surrendering all obstacles. Remove all the mental and emotional obstacles that prevent you from being fully receptive to all the incoming gifts that are coming in right now. They come in as a result of you offering up all your gifts and all your efforts through the practice. So now accept it all with gratitude. Inhale, feel yourself being flooded with all those benefits. Bring them right to the center, the chest, to the right side of the physical heart, the spiritual heart. Hold it there, make it an offering to God. And the exhale, imagine it's going out to all beings for God is equally present in all beings. Inhale again, fill yourself up, draw in the best of the best, everything that you need, which is what, every, what everyone needs. All the qualities you're trying to cultivate, all that brings you contentment and connection. Hold it in the heart, and on the exhale, send it all to, to all beings everywhere. Through that divine connection that we find, the common thread that binds us together, which is God. 
that sits in your spiritual heart. One more time, inhale. Draw in everything that you desire. Bring it right to, direct it right to the spiritual heart. On the exhale, just send it out to all beings everywhere. So as a result, your practice becomes an act of divine love. And just make an intention of being in the, staying in the mindset of being the humble servant to all beings. When you expect nothing, everything comes to you. Bring that intention, exercise that intention in your daily life, in all your interactions, in your day-to-day -day life, stay on a path of offering or stay in the intent of off intention of offering. So now prepare to come back to seated position. Move slowly, move gracefully. Continue to pretend you're the witness, watching yourself move with softness, with silence. Now sitting tall and supreme, we close our practice with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Instill the peace within and send it out to all beings everywhere. to the divine grace within. Be receptive to the grace of God. This concludes our practice. Thank you so very much for coming. Namaste. Thank you everybody for coming. Such a pleasure. So 